You're listening to Movie Sucktastic. Howdy do, neighbor. Hello. Hey. Man? Huh? Huh? Who was that? Ah, uh, that's just some broad. Oh. She's talking to Casey Affleck, who looks like he's homeless. Yeah. Oh, 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 that's every <laughs> other film he's in. <laughs> no, he's he looks especially homeless in the yeah. uh, all of the uh, advertising and interviews that he's doing, and just all the post. Uh, you know, just things that he's doing to, to get the word out on the movie he just looks homeless he's got this huge beard his hair looks greasy um very unkempt <laughs> that's kind of his his look right now yeah yeah but uh it'll probably yeah, so be is... his look at the oscars as well sure um so those those are you are visiting for the first time this is movie sucktastic yeah baby. Uh, the podcast that reviews films mostly of the bad quality but and this is a, what but right now we're doing our Oscar coverage, which we do every year, and we That's where we review all. And it doesn't mean that you know when we watch when we watch the Best Picture nominees that they're all good. So they do fall into the this movie sucks category. Whereas, right, but we don't go out of our way to batch just shit talk films that are decent. Oh yeah. Quality. Whereas this year the only yeah. f- the uh, the only film of the Oscar nominees so far that I just flat out didn't like was La La Land. La La Land, yes, yes. And yes, uh, yes, I mean, I recognize yeah. that it's a well-made movie and that the performances and, are well made or well done. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't mean that I found it enjoyable in any way. Or, or qualifying for best best picture absolutely should not be nominated for best picture absolutely not that should be out nocturnal animals should be in in my right. opinion so but any, yeah but anyhow. i mean but we're not gonna bad mouth films that are good just to be sound funny or cool oh and the woman that's interviewing him is pregnant so that's not depressing at all haha ha. <laughs> um oh okay Anyway, yeah, so speaking of depressing, uh, this is episode number 325. It probably should be, but it's not. No, t- well, 245. 235. 235. I was close. Uh, had was we not forward. skipped so many episodes, we probably should be in episode 300. Yeah. Actually, that's not true. Uh, I actually did the math not that long ago. <clears throat> I did the math not that long ago. Had we never, ever, ever missed an episode, we right now we would be around episode 280-something. So that's not too bad. No, we're only like six, uh, 50 episodes behind. We, we make up for it during Oscar season because we end up doing two episodes, two uh, reviews, and up two episodes a week. Well, basically, we, were, we didn't record anything from basically s- uh, the end of November to oh, the, the end of the reason. You know, for like a month, we didn't record anything. So, with good reason. Excuse me. We're actually making up for all those episodes we missed. Yeah, but, but I mean, we took that up month off with good reason. Well, yeah, it was Christmas. <laughs> well, and other things, yeah. Sure. So. Wow, okay. <clears throat> anyway. So, no. Anyway. It, it just, uh, yes, we're not that far behind. But, but we're going to be if we don't finish this episode. Yeah, it, well. <laughs> <laughs> And in this episode, we're reviewing the Oscar-nominated film for Best Picture, Manchester by the Sea, or as I like to call it, 
just shoot me in the fucking head. Yeah. <laughs> Holy. Now, I'm going to say right now, this film, there's no way to talk about this film from my standpoint without spoiler alert. I agree. We are we are going to ruin aspects of this film for you if you have not seen it yet. Please pause the film, watch the... Sorry, pa- pause the podcast, the plod- watch the cast. film. Yes. If you pause the film, we're not going to get through this whole thing. No. But pause the show, watch the entire film, digest it, then come back and hit continue. So, just a um, full-on warning, we're talking about shit. Yeah. I, but, I mean, this film... I'm just tired of being sad this Oscar season. Yeah, you know, what and, the fuck? and 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 what as, the fuck? And as a father of two children, uh, very difficult to watch. But I mean, here, here's the deal. First 15 minutes in, I'm like, all right, I already want to kill myself. Hmm. Uh, one of, one of our listeners, Stephen, uh, had had mentioned earlier. Uh, he had told he had asked me if I'd seen it yet. I said no. And I said, well, he said, well, if you do. Uh, if you're on suicide prevention watch, you may want to skip this one. <laughs> and so 15 minutes through the film, I had to message him and go, dude, you were right. I'm already ready to open a vein. Now, the big for me, the big reveal is about almost an hour in. Yeah. So even before the big reveal, which is, even though I said spoiler, I'm trying not to say Hor- it. Horrifying. That big reveal, I was like, I'm like, Holy shit! And I thought this was depressing before I knew why he's so upset. <laughs> and after I saw that, I'm like, "Yeah, I wouldn't do anything any different." No, <laughs> the, the one scene is like, "Yeah, yeah, that's it." Um, all right, can I say it? Can I say what happened? You can say it. All right, again, 100 percent spoiler, and we don't do this often because we like we we could easily just dance over. But I can tell you from a from an emotional standpoint, up until. The part where you find out his ch- he, he was the reason his children died in a house fire. I'm like, yeah, this guy's already depressing. Then that hits, and you're just like, holy shit. This, you know, just even then I'm like suicidal. So when you get, get past that part, the part where he's talking to the cops, and then on the way out, he grabs a gun and tries to shoot himself in the head. I'm like, that's pretty much how right. I feel right and, now. And then and the safety is on, and he just looks at it yeah. like, he's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, and then he continues I mean, to deep like, tries to take the safety off and continues to try. It wasn't one of those things where it's like he tried and he's like, "Yeah, what the fuck am I doing?" He's like, "God damn it!" I, I need to put it wrong. Hold I, on, give me a second. I need Hold to. On. I need to second make. Time I'll get it. I need to make this work. This this yeah, has but, to happen. <laughs> but but once that happened, like the bottom dropped out of me. I was like, okay, I I might as well just like die now with this film. Right. As much, <laughs> it's fucking, fucking horrible. Yeah, it's like just it's just the bottom drops out of you with that scene. And, uh, wow. Now on a on a lighter note, since and it, they it's... they don't reveal any of that stuff. That's the good thing because the the big reveal they make it feel like the big reveal is that the father died, and so you're right. like, okay, I'm gonna take that as the big reveal, and you know something's wrong with him, but you're not really a hundred percent, but you're not really sure it's gonna be that like he killed his whole family accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> It's like such a major fucking jump. Right. And, and it's and, all done with flashbacks, expertly done. Very well done flashbacks. I mean, to the point of where th- there was no confusion whatsoever. It's like, am I in a flashback or am I not? It's just you knew when you were in one. The first time they did it, you were kind of confused, but as soon as you knew what they were doing, it was all like, all right, I know I'm in a flashback now. They didn't try to confuse you. That first one kind of throws you off, but then once you realize that's what it is, right? Then, it never, it right. never caused any confusion in the narrative at yeah, all. Absolutely, that's really done. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, when he's actually telling the police about what happened, he's even he's telling them things that he doesn't have to, like oh yeah, there was pot, there was some cocaine, and and then he says then you know everyone left. It's like two in the morning or three in the morning when they actually finally did leave for real. Then he's like, he goes and he watches TV, and he's just giving yeah. him this whole, like, in-depth, you know, very detailed, and then he's like, then I ran out of beer, so I went to the shop, but he says his wife, Randy, she gets, uh, you know, uh, like, her, her her sinuses get all dried out, so now, you can't put the now, central air on, or central heat. Here, here, here's the whole point of that entire scene, though, too. As he's telling the cops... You can tell it's not that these details are coming up because he's concerned that they want all the information. No, he you wants. Can tell that, he wants to be punished. No, no, but go beyond that. This whole scene, it's what he's reciting is almost verbatim at this point because since the moment he finds his house afire, 
all of these events are playing over in his head over and over and over again. Yeah. That's why when he's telling the cops, it's almost like, yeah, this is the 50th time I've gone over all these facts. Let me just list them to you. Yeah, and then when he's... It had when that he's, kind of monotonous, almost surreal quality to him because he's... Because that... It made me, there was a logic to that, how that comes out of a mo- voice, and that it just shows that he was in an emotional state that you expect. Yeah. The and actor. Then, and then for when the he, character. Yeah. Fucking mind-blowing. Yeah, and then when he... Um, when he... Uh, when he tells them that halfway to the store, he he remembers that he didn't put the screen on the fireplace because the whole thing, the whole thing that happened, how the house caught on fire, was because he wasn't putting the central heat on because his wife's sinuses get dried out and it's very painful, blah blah blah. So he started a fire in the fireplace to heat the house up and didn't put the screen. And he said, "Well, one of the logs must have rolled out." But he said halfway to the mini mart, he realized he didn't put the screen. And said, "No, he said he, he 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 wasn't sure if he put the screen up." And he said, "Well, if he didn't, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure, it's not a big deal." And he right. said he was too fucked up to drive, so he walked. And he goes, "It's 20 minutes each way uh, to walk it." Well, and, and like all that up to the end of that scene, where, where they tell him, "Like, well, you're free to go." And he's like, "You mean I could leave?" It's like, "Well, you know, you made a mistake." Right. I, I, what am I gonna? You've got three dead kids. What am I? What am I gonna tell you? You made a bad move. It's like people make bad mistakes and things happen. That's it. And the cops are like, uh, you know, a horse uh, that's supposed to be in front of this thing. Maybe you can come and breathe on us. <laughs> and then the best line, uh, because they just found out that they couldn't bury his father because the ground is frozen solid, and they have to uh-huh. put him in a freezer. His father in a freezer, and he's Patty is very unhappy about that. So later on, that scene happens about you know the car, nineteen twenty eight, and where's the horse? Maybe he come breathe on us for warmth. And he goes, yeah, maybe we could put my father in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just that dark style of humor that it it in a movie like but, this. And it's take, real. Take, the humor is so real too. It's, yeah. it's like that. It's, it's like that. Um, what, what's it called? Uh, not coffin humor. Dark humor. Black, no, 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 oh, but mean, there's a, oh, I there's know a it, certain... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't... Off the top of my head, I can't think of it. But but you're right. Um, and then there's another scene in the film that's supposed to be just funny, and it doesn't work. And it's where they're at the house, and the one... the His brother's friend comes over. He goes, did you eat? He goes, no, I had some cheese. Oh, and then gallows there's humor. That, gallows humor. Gallows humor. That's That's it. what I meant. Sorry. So then the guy is calling back to his wife. Oh, yeah. And he's like, uh, "Did he eat?" He goes, "Like he doesn't want anything." And it's it's just this back and forth for like a but minute. I, I don't think it's supposed to be funny as much as to show the awkwardness of those moments. No, I I, I thought it was a nice. I felt it's a nice I, contrast to the to the main character who's very silent and subdued, just trying to avoid any kind of like human interaction. And you've got right. these people bellowing the stupid conversation over a crowd of mourners at a crowded house. It really showed a great contrast between the two characters. I, I do thought. I do get the feeling that it was meant to be funny. Uh, maybe but, I'm yeah, maybe but, but, I'm but digesting it. Out loud. Ho, 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 ho. Oh no no no. But I think yeah. it was meant to kind of break up uh, you know the somber uh, just kill yourself feeling that you're getting most of the time during watching this movie. Um, I it shows it shows the levity that occurs during a somber event like that. I mean, that maybe happened. I digested that scene wrong, but I felt that it was supposed to be this kind of the brevity type, you know, uh, kind of funny scene, and I didn't think it yeah, worked. Yeah, I don't think it's to the level of brevity you're talking. That's all I don't think. Um, I mean, I, I think it was. I think it was pulled off. To, to, I, I think it, it it worked as well it was supposed to. Yeah, I, I, I mean, supposed don't to get leave me wrong. that feeling of awkwardness. So I don't think it was supposed to be laugh out loud funny. It was supposed to give you that kind of nervous humor. And I think it, I think it succeeded exactly where it wanted to. I think it did that on purpose. And again, everything that happens to that scene, I think, is on purpose. Maybe I'm just looking at it differently, but I thought it was intended to just to be just this is going to be a funny scene. No, I, I I disagree. Okay. You yeah. Can, you can do that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, as as far as you know, things like that go. For the most part, this film is very depressing. Um, <laughs> oh fuck yes! It, it's, Jesus it's fucking Christ! Yes. Ridiculously <laughs> depressing. But one of the things that I will praise the film for is this is also a two-hour and twenty-minute film, and I thought that. It was very well put together. I thought it moved very quickly, and it, it, I like drawn out. 
I like the way it was edited, where scenes kind of ended abruptly, and it f and it absolutely felt purposeful. It didn't feel like it was a poor edit. It felt like, yeah, this is how we end scenes in this type of a film. You know, you know, I like. I, I think it's like there's certain scenes where it does that, where not only is it trying to get that kind of weird disjointed jar, but it's also going to tell you says, at this point, anything else, that's all you need to know. We're done here. Yeah. And I, I like how it does it sometimes. It's like, yeah, you know what? We're done here. You've got the point. Let's move on. Yeah, and I, but it does it in a jarring way that kind of life feels. I, I think it has that life feel to it. That kind I, of. Well, I think it parallels real life very well in, in that. Yeah, where it's just saying. like when you're done with something, you're done with something. You're not going to just keep talking or keep lingering on about, you know, it's like, oh, we went to the morgue and I saw my dad. And it's just like the scene ends. Boom. It's done. You know? Right. But also, again, it's like those jarring kind of cuts is how life works. Life has jarring cuts where suddenly you're feeling one way yeah. and then all of a sudden this happens and now you have to feel another way that quickly. It's just as quickly as one of those cuts from a scene just before, you know, there's no real segue. Definitely. And I, 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 it adds a frenetic nature to a film that is essentially very placid. Yeah. I, I think the editing heightens that that sense in a way that the, the very, very centered stable pictures of the film the frames doesn't portray and i think that's where you get that kind of like raw raw nerve feel in the film yeah. um okay so do that makes sense or am i just no, no 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 no. it makes perfect sense do we want to double check do we want to talk about the title yes so what do you think of the title since i hate the i hate the fucking title yeah i'm not really it it, it really it's only got one meeting. It's just a location of where the movie takes place. That's I, it. I, I just I hate the fucking title. I think it's so fucking New England. Well, and, and that's obviously what it's shooting for, but but I, but too much so. Yeah, I mean, you bre if you break it down, uh, it it is really only one meaning. It's the location of where the film takes place. But if you right. break it down even a little more. You can squeak a little more out of that in the fact that that's where his family, you know, died. That's where he died, uh, pretty much. It's, it's a know, past he doesn't want to go back to, he, which is kind of evident which, through the whole film. That's well, why he can't stay there with the kid. Well, and then you find that out later in the film. He goes, "I just, I can't beat it." He goes, I, "Yeah, I, I, it's I, not even that I, I can't be here. I can't be here because I can't, I can't get over this hump in my life. I cannot." get beyond this yeah, it's and holding me back I don't fucking blame him <laughs> yeah you know? I mean the film the film speaks so loudly for itself and no matter what title you put on this film it won't convey what you're gonna see it's almost like they really should just relate re I would love to see a film like this be released as untitled um, a film where it's like you know no matter what we slap on this fucking film it's not gonna even come close to it, describing what you're in for and the less you know, the better. How about just untitled? First, first director that does that is gets best picture that year. I fucking guarantee it. <laughs> so, Seriously. is the name of the film going to be untitled? You name the film untitled. So, but that okay. I mean, it has <laughs> it has a name. No, but if it's untitled. But the, okay, I I. I the title is untitled. So, but, it, in, but in, that's in, in, ironically, though, it's just untitled. In essence, it, it, it has a title. But it's not. They're not doing it ironically. It's called untitled. Yeah, I don't know if that one's best. Untitled picture. means there's no title. Yeah. So even if your title is untitled, you still don't have a title. Sure. No, that's how it works. I think you inadvertently called the. I think you inadvertently named the movie untitled by not giving it a title. So I right. So un, it's untitled. Let's move on. <laughs> so we, so so we can both agree that the title sucks. Uh, um, we just we can uh, we can, but with the caveat that there's no. I can't come up with a better title for you. It's one of those few things where it's like you know what? I can't think of a title that would do this film justice. Right. I mean, like, Ordinary People, fucking, that is a perfect title for that film. It works. Manchester by the Sea, what are you even fucking talking about? Yeah, it's just the location. It's just a horrible title. 
I'm sure I could come up with a very cheesy one right now that would match the film, but it wouldn't be good. I can't give you I can't give you anything better than this because there's nothing this film needs to be called untitled. Well, right? Yeah, no. Nah. All right, fine. <laughs> what would you rate this film? Um, out of I, ten, I I, I, I wouldn't go lower than an eight. messages now. I wouldn't go lower than an eight. I, I was gonna say I won't go higher than an eight. You wouldn't go higher than an eight? Yeah, I, I think it's a very good film, but I don't know if I want to give a higher than eight. I'm I'm fine with eight. I'm perfect with eight with this. No, film. no, I'm perfectly perfectly fine with an eight. All right, that's eight at fifty eight thousand votes on IMDb. Now and. They- well, yes. No, 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 go ahead. All I was going to say is the highest demographic is uh, males under 18, 8.6, and females under 18 tied. Uh, and then the lowest demographic, uh, besides the I, uh, besides the uh, IMDb staff, is uh, males 45 and older. Uh-huh. Which is a sharp contrast because the highest demographic in Fences that we reviewed last episode was... Uh, the highest demographic was females over 45 for fences. Now, for this film, we've got the the uh, lowest demographic. No, but it's not because males under 45. So everything I said doesn't make any sense. Oh, I even lost my train of thought. That's on right. That one. Am- Amazon did all of the advertising for. Uh for Manchester by the Sea. So if it were to win Best Picture, Amazon gets an Oscar. See, and that's one of those things, too, because Amazon... Well, no, but they just advertise. It doesn't mean, like, they produced it or anything. No, they're they're part of the production company. So they... they that doesn't mean they get, like, the, the, the best director, the best picture film, picture, do they? I believe they do. Really? All the producers get Best Picture? All okay, pro- kinda, like, kinda all, sense, all producers get uh, Best... If you win Best Picture, all the producers get that. All right, so Amazon will get a Best Picture. That's why. Um, and the only reason their name's on that is because they probably funded it a little bit, and they all, but, but they did so by selling them their um, distribution rights. So they're they're a distributor that'll end up with a Best Picture Oscar. Yeah, and it says here as award watchers expected, Manchester by the Sea ended up being a major Oscar magnet for its co-distributor. Amazon, the film which was also Amazon's oh, distributor. Right. first Golden Globe winner, NAB six Academy Award nominations. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but I, I don't think Verizon gets an Oscar. Uh, it would be Amazon. Amazon, that's what I meant. Um, Same thing. They pay $10 million for distribution rights. Right. So basically, they own most of this but film. But they don't have a production credit. Uh, yeah, they do. When Manchester was his Sundance last year, of course, the real test for the film will be the amount of Oscars it actually earns. But the nominations alone will give Amazon more clout in Hollywood. I'm totally disagreeing with what you're saying. In here. comparison, Netflix scored just one Academy Award nomination today for the documentary 13th. Uh, Amazon, to its credit, has been quick about snapping up distribution rights for smaller films at festivals like Sundance. And it also ensures they get full theatrical runs. Netflix. Now, they, now still when they films. say Amazon is produ- you know, like, as a producer, that the Amazon is not on the credits as an actual producer. You may have a representative of Amazon listed as a producer, but that doesn't mean Amazon is the producer. I guess, Matt Damon was a producer on this. Yeah, he would get an Oscar if they won. Okay, great, but but Amazon doesn't get an Oscar. I read the some... company doesn't get an Oscar. Well, let's You're say talk, jo- let's say that's Joe crazy. Blow is the head muckety muck at Amazon who that, but gets gets a producing credit because they have distribution rights. He would get the Oscar. Yeah, but so in yeah, turn, so Amazon would Oscar, get the Oscar. But Amazon's not getting the Oscar. Well, no, they're not going to say, and the Oscar goes to Manchester by Amazon, Sea, and then right. someone with an Amazon shirt is going to come up there and accept it. Exactly. <laughs> that's so it's not. Amazon's not winning the award, Amazon, but they're hyping it as that because Amazon has distribution rights. Because they would be partly responsible because they distributed the film. Right. Well, yeah, because then we couldn't see it. <laughs> but that doesn't get you an Oscar. Um, they don't have best distribution. They don't have best distribution yet. On the on the at least I didn't see it. I'm not. I'm not going to do the homework on it now. I'll figure it out later. 
All right, I'm sure you'll. But I, I read an article that would say, that said Amazon would, in fact, get an Oscar. I mean, it I might, don't believe that. It at won't. All, it so. won't say. Yeah, it won't say Amazon on the Oscar. If, <laughs> if you prove me wrong, I won't be upset. Let me put it that way. But Whatever. I'm still pretty sure they don't get it. So anyhow. Anyhow, so, of the yeah. Oscars that Manchester's up for. What do you, any favorites? What is it up for? Best picture. I got best picture. Best actor. Uh, lead actor. Uh, supporting actor for the kid, right, Patrick? I yeah, I think so. Um, supporting actress for Michelle Williams. Yes, she's not in it enough. <laughs> she's not. Uh, I mean, there, there's some <laughs> raves that they have on the screen during the trailer that says that she's, you know, Michelle Williams is is astonishing. She is not in the film enough, and she has Does she one show her breasts. Huh? Does she show her breasts? No. There's, there you go. There's only one scene in the film where she actually earns that nomination, and it's which near scene? it's near the end. Which scene? The one where she's she has I had the baby already, and with the baby carriage with the baby, baby carriage, carriage that scene. That scene. Okay, I'll that, that that gives her the nomination, but it's but not still, it's not en- film enough. It's not enough. You're right. You, I agree with you on that. Um, um, and after that, I I think it's just uh, nothing. Uh, it's got six nominations. Original, original screenplay. Original screen. Okay, so it's picture, actor, screenplay, supporting, supporting actor, act, supporting actress, supporting actress, and director. Yeah, and director. Lonergan. So those are the six. Um, Casey Affleck probably should win Best Actor for this. But you don't think he's going to because of the whole touchy feely thing? I, I have a feeling that they're going to vote. They're gonna they're gonna vote against him for all of all of that. Um, if, not that I think any of it's true. It could very well all be true, but that shouldn't it matter. That shouldn't it doesn't af- matter. It it's should, out there. It shouldn't affect him winning the Oscar. If he's perfor- if he gave the best performance, he should get the Oscar for that. But I, I get the feeling it's like um, there was all these rumblings about Russell Crowe winning a second. Best actor um, for *A Beautiful Mind*. He had one for *Gladiator*, and then oh, he, yeah. then a couple of years later, he did *A Beautiful Mind*, and he had won. I believe he had won the BAFTA. He had won the SAG. He had he was sweeping all of that, and then there was an altercation at one of those award shows that was before the Oscars, where he got into a physical altercation with someone. Uh, uh-huh. higher up the in the food chain as far as Hollywood goes and word got around that it happened and even though they he probably deserved the Oscar that year for Beautiful Mind he didn't get it and it's rumored that it was mainly because of that altercation that they just said fuck you we're not voting for you now because he couldn't contain himself he ha- he's had a history of that like he made some bellboy a millionaire by throwing a phone at him at some uh like super expensive hotel in like new york city yeah i remember that um so hey you can throw a phone at me if you're gonna give me money for it <laughs> i won't even ask for a million dollars so <laughs> just pay off so my right, ha- just pay off my house <laughs> so right now we've reviewed seven of the nine films for oscar yes. for best picture not counting the two we haven't reviewed yet, who is your dead favorite? Does this count towards your favorite, or what's your what, what do you think is walks away best picture? Uh, um, and then, you know what? It's one of the few years where I feel like it's a tough call. Well, you know I what? Feel like we have enough quality films here that I actually am conflicted to choose one. I still would prefer Hell or High Water to actually take everything. But I agree I, with you. I don't think there's a snowball's chance in hell. I agree with you. You know. Um, yes. I would probably go this next, then Fences. You so, think Manchester over Fences? Yeah. Is that is that and why is that? Do you think Fences is going to win something else? I think I, yeah, I, I I don't think Manchester by the Sea is going to win Best Picture. I mean, I've already said La La Land is winning Best Picture. Just expect it. All right, but so. I'll, I'll, so so right now out of these seven you you think La La Land's dead in the wind? Oh, absolutely! It's it's a lock. 
Dude, take all really? of, take any money you have and just go put it on, you know, fucking black. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It, but it just technically you're putting on white. <laughs> uh you can't get whiter than La La Land. Uh, I don't. I, I don't believe there were any black actors in. Even Lolo. with the jazz, uh, there well, was a couple. Well, there was a couple. He, John even Legend with all the and jazz, a, way too much white. It's like ninety nine percent white. <laughs> you know, it's that pesky one percent. <laughs> um, no, but if I was picking, I would pick Hell or High Water. Well, you are because I'm asking you to pick. No, no. Well, I. I think La La Land gets it all, but if I could choose... If you were voting, you would vote for... If I was for, voting, I'd vote for Hell or High Water. No, and again, we haven't seen Lion... What, we haven't reviewed Lion or Moonlight yet. Yeah. So, not counting those two, not just counting all the others. Two. I'd go Hell or High Water, then I'd go Manchester, then I'd go Fences. I, that's the way I would go. I think you'd go the same way, but I think you're probably going to reverse... Fences with Manchester. For me, I, I would say it's a tie between Hell or High Water and Fences, and fences. with Manchester a close second between the two of them. Or a so, close third. So, would you actually go Fences over Hell or High Water? I don't know. Depending on the day, maybe? Depending on the day, honestly, because they're both so well done and they both show different aspects of society okay. and the individual and how one molds the other and the other rejects the other. I, just so and, much there. And let me just put it out there. I wouldn't be disappointed if any one of those three actually won Best Picture. Yeah. Uh, if any of these, if any of those three won, I don't think either of us would be like, eh. It, w it would be like me with, with ar the artist. I think about the... Oh, the <laughs> so far, without, without reviewing Moonlight or uh, Lion, so far... I would be fine with anyone winning Best Picture except for La La Land, which is going to win Best Picture. I also would be against Arrival winning. I don't think it's anywhere close. I like the film. I, I ended up enjoying it, I but I it's... still don't think it deserves to be nominated. I think that's just, oh, let's get the popular sci-fi film in this year. But if it which won... Is like, it's, it... Which is like a tradition since Avatar. Right. And I think that... I, you want to be real conspiracy theorists? I think the only reason they keep including sci-fi films in the best pictures is so that when Avatar 2 comes out, they can try to give it like an honorable nod. Probably. Probably. And then they'll talk I, about how conspiracy. Godfather 2... Right. And there were Right. And, you know, but, uh, but I agree with you. Any, anything else, I would be like, eh, that, that was a good film. I it, think, you know... If Arrival won Best Picture, I'd be happy because La La Land didn't win Best Picture. <laughs> All right, yeah, there'd be a silver lining to the cloud yes, on that one. Yes, absolutely. But I'm saying anything else, there'd be no cloud. Be like, oh, I understand that. I, I, I can see the logic behind that. That was a very good film. Yep. That's worthy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, one, of the, I say one of the most po I think this is one of the most positive Oscar episodes we've ever had. Yeah. I don't think any other year we've had enough films where we were like, yeah, that's not just a waste of time or a cliche. That's actually a good film. I'm actually I really feel like looking this is like one of the most positive years we've had in a while. Except for La La Land, I've been looking forward to watching except every La single... Except La La Land. But even La La Land's like a... La La Land isn't even like a... Why does this even get in there? It's like you, you, you understand exactly why they, they put it in there. Right. Every it's like it was the film was made to be an Oscar nominee, so you even understand why. It's yeah. not it's not like fucking Avatar. It's like how could you even think of putting this fucking shit in here? Right, and, and it's like I'm looking forward to watching or, or or to seeing every one of these these nominees every week, and I don't think and, I've ever been that way. You know what? I, I also I'm I want to see Captain Fantastic, so I can close out lead actor, and right um, original screenplay. Is after we wouldn't do all the best pictures, I'll only be short The Lobster and 20th Century Woman. And, I, and The Lobster is a film I've been meaning to watch for a while and never got around to it. So, let's see what what am I short? Um, probably roughly the same. Best picture, obviously only Lion and Moonlight. Um, right. Best actor, Vigo. Yeah, uh, only Vigo. Right, actress. Yeah, I got some homework to do with actress. Well, Nocturnal Animals. I'm gonna watch it this weekend. Uh, I have to. I still have to see L, Loving Jackie, and Florence Foster Jenkins. Same here. 
I have to watch all of those. <laughs> so basically, everything except La La Land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have to watch and lead actress. Best actor. Um, only Lion and Moonlight, which that'll be taken care of for next week. Supporting actress, you mean? Best actor in a supporting role. Lion and oh, Moon. Oh, the actress. No, I'm I'm on best uh, best. Oh, you want actor actress, and now you're doing supporting. So well, I'm I'm on the list for uh, Oscars. I'm just going down the line. But I'm um, saying your line goes actor actress supporting actor supporting actress. Yes. That that's why I got mixed up. Okay, so then Lion and Moonlight taken care of next week. I'll have that category. I can I can right. weigh in on best exactly. actress in a supporting role. Um, yeah, Lion and Moonlight again. And I and I need to see Nocturnal Animals this weekend, right? And then I'll be up, up to speed with you, and we'll be all good on supporting actor, cinematography, uh, Lion and Moonlight, and Silence. I have to watch. I That's don't, I don't know if I want to see Silence though. Um, for the cinematography, Which Silence. For, That's the Scorsese film, the Japanese World War Two one. I don't know if I want to see that. Um, for cinematography alone, just to get that category, because I've seen everything uh, in the list. Uh -huh. or, or will after next week because Lion and Moonlight are in the list. I need to see it just so that I can complete the category. Um, directing. It's another film with Spider Man in it, too. It's another film with Spider Man, yeah, Andrew Garfield. Motherfucker. He's all over the place. Yeah, so it looks like if I get Lion and Moonlight in there, uh, I pretty, oh, sure. pretty much have. A lot of it fills pre out. Pretty much have everything. I mean, then I have to watch Silence and all the best actress uh, films. But other than that... Still, but you still have to see Lobster and 20th Century for original script. That is correct. And I'm sure that's low on your list. It is, but I'll get it done by the time Oscars rolls around. Right. So really... I'm still 50-50 on Oscars. I only, I'm I'm I, Oscars. I only got on I only got five or six movies to watch where I could literally weigh in on almost every category except for like documentary and sh uh, animated short. Right. Like, even the um, best animated feature, I've seen Kubo and the Two Strings, I've seen Moana, I've seen Zootopia, uh, I, have the uh, I have the Red Turtle, but I haven't watched it yet, and I, 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 I don't even know where I could go see my life as a zucchini, so it's just, it's I, unattainable. I'm still only one for five. Zootopia. Yeah. Um, and so far, so far I think that's a shoe one for best, best animated feature. Either that or Moana, because both of them are different. Well, I haven't seen... I've told one I've seen, so so far it's the best one. Yeah. Um, check out Kubo and the Two Strings. It's actually very good. I saw the first 20 minutes of it. I'm tired of the fucking... The, Stop I'm, motion? I, no. No, no, no. Tired of the, the Disney fucking films that involve dead parents. I, I, I'm done. I I'm done. I don't believe that's a Disney movie, but... Is it Disney? It's I, still a fucking animated cartoon. I'm tired of it. I was like, oh, the father's dead, the mother's insane. I'm done watching already. <laughs> Seriously, can we um, just have like something a bit more fun? I no too much. I, <laughs> uh, it, the animation was great, and the story so far was just irritating on that level. So okay, it's animated feature. Who cares? Well, I've seen them. I've seen everything but two. So I'm gonna try and get both of those. All right, I'll, I I know I have access to the Red Turtle, so I'll try that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so are we done? I, I guess so, if yeah, you're I, done with me. I'm done. Jabbering. Yeah. I have to wait, All right. I have to wait for my wife to come home. Do we, do, we, do we go too long on that? 40 minutes. You made it sound like you were upset, like you wanted to stop it. I kind of do, but I'm not upset about it. <laughs> wow, it kind of hurts my feelings. No, I need to go just kind of sit down and chill because I've been going all day long. Well, we should play Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Or that, that, that chilling. <laughs> uh, not that kind of chilling. I'm just gonna. Oh, I'm never gonna, mind. I'm gonna chill on the couch. I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna hook up my new uh, retro pie. Did I tell you that? Retro what? I got the Raspberry Pi three. Remember, I sent you that oh, video. Oh, oh, so that you're playing all the old games on that. Yeah, I got the Raspberry Pi three. You got that. I, yeah. I I got the Raspberry Pi three. I got. A 16 gig uh, micro SD card and put the new RetroPie operating system on it, and then I have a flash drive with like 60 gig of just 
Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Genesis, kind of like, Ma- all of that. Kind of like the emulator we had on the Xbox. Yeah, but better. It's just better. It's better. Um, it's and how much did I run you? Around eighty dollars, you said. Um, let's see. Uh, thirty dollars for the Raspberry Pi. Eight dollars for power supply. Um, seven dollars for the micro SD. Now, why do you need a power supply? Oh, never mind. Cause like computer. It's, it's a motherboard. It's got to get plugged in. That's but right. Never mind. Ignore it's me. you. It's you could buy a kit for like sixty bucks, but if you piecemeal it, you'll spend less money. So everything ran about seventy dollars. And, and this was instead of getting what? The NES Mini, which had how many games? Thirty. And how much did that cost? Sixty. No brainer. And, and. The controllers are only three feet long, so you have to sit in front of the with the, the Nintendo one, with the official one. The official one, you right. either have to buy extension cables, or wireless controllers, or you have to buy because new... they think because they think it's still 1957 and every, all of the kids are sitting three feet in front of their fucking huge yeah. tube televisions. And, and you know what? It's it's about if the camera can see, it's about this big. You can't fit original. Oh, you can't fit original. It fits in the palm of your hand. You can't right. fit. It obviously doesn't take original cartridges. All right. So it's not even like the Genesis one that they came out with last year, where it actually takes original Genesis cartridges. It's just like that. Sure. It's like because there's still a market better. for that shit too. So they're they're yeah. appealing to the collectors. Exactly. So yeah, I. I'm I so this emulator that I have, I've got in television, ColecoVision, Atari twenty six fifty two seventy eight hundred. I the, there's as far as like ignoring the new retail market, but as far as like secondhand market, there's probably more of a of a market for a, like Atari and Sega games now than there were during that time period. Yeah, it's crazy. It really, I really think it's just such a huge resurgence, or even just like a growing uh, clinging to it, but that. People are st- everywhere you go. You're gonna see. I I could go to any flea market, and I I know I'm gonna I can walk away with the Dreamcast and like half a dozen Atari and Sega games. Oh yeah, this does Dream. Uh, you can do Dreamcast emulation with this too. <sighs> so they they say you have to lower the resolution to 480. Um, ooh, ooh. Well, most games don't come higher than that anyway. <laughs> Honestly, out of all the game systems I've had in the past, the one that I miss is I wish I had my Dreamcast again. I still have mine. I know, and I hate you for that. <laughs> but with the Retro Pi, with the Raspberry Pi, you can you can do Dreamcast emulation. And for the most part, it it, 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 it kind of is the you know, same. It's a I, copy I, of the ROM. Know, I've been to like so two dozen, three dozen flea market stores where they have a Dreamcast and they have like Dreamcast games. Yeah. And I've always looked, and they never have Skies of Arcadia. Oh, really? I was like, if you had Skies of Arcadia, I'd buy this system from you right now. Well, you can That's the buy one it. one game. And then you can get Skies of Arcadia, like, on eBay. Well, what I'm saying is, like, it's, it was like, a, it's like an impulse thing. We're, we're at a store. It's like, hey, you know what? If you have Skies of Arcadia, I'll buy this whole fucking thing right now. And they never have it. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I have the, the disc for Skies of Arcadia, which I can rip into a ROM... Which I could then put I'm on, just saying, on the retro pie. I'm just saying is that that's like the one game that I, like Seaman I could give a shit about. I love Grand. Th- I, I love uh, Crazy Taxi too. But Skies of Arcadia is like one of the games that like you can. You, I just for some reason I loved that fucking game. It's a great game. Yeah, great th- game. that and even well, the Cloud uh, Cloud well, Atlas, not Cloud Atlas, um, Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud. <laughs> Space Channel Five. Was that the other oh, one oh, you like? Oh, Space Channel Five. Oh, I loved Space Channel Five. Yeah. Those are the three games. And then what was the other one? Um, Jet Set Radio. Fuck. For but Jet Set Radio, actually came out on Xbox, and it's a decent copy. I don't know. I still prefer only on the Dreamcast. I'm weird that way. I can tell the difference. I don't think there is a difference. I but I can. I there is, and I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're not playing with a controller that's the size of a fucking the soccer ball. The controller part of it. I, I agree. It is part of it. I yeah. have. I'm staring at it right now. I have a brand new Dreamcast controller in the box, on the wall right there. I hate you. Because I I bought two of them. I always buy two controllers when I get a video game system. Always. Because in case. Well, I we're done recording. I'm gonna make myself some popcorn. I'm playing video games for the next like two three hours now. Cool. It's your fault. 
<laughs> that's it. Nice. That's it. That's, that's my night right now. I can I can predict it for you. Well, if my wife comes Ooh. home and denies me sex, you might see me um, hop on there. Oh yeah, we'll do Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. I you know I just started doing it again because it's one of the games I never finished. Oh, we could do sexy talk ourselves if you Cause, want. Because I uh, I fucking I I I played the shit out of Dead Rising Four. Oh no, me too. I'm 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 missing like a handful of achievements, and I've, I've like gone through the whole game like four times I think now. I'm, I think I'm missing like 15 achievements, but uh, like two or three of them are multiplayer. Yeah, um, well, you and I have to do that again. You yeah. know, two or three are like multiplayer, and then I got a couple uh, that are just uh, you know building weapons. Like I haven't built all 58 yet, and then the other one is to finish getting the blueprints for the combo vehicles. All very attainable stuff. I just have to put in the time to get go. with the timer. Yeah, and you know it's funny because we're, we're having a discussion now, and I remember when I was watching Manchester by the Sea, and I'm thinking, I'll be sur- I'll be surprised if I don't kill myself before we review this fucking movie. <laughs> and and the fact we're at a point where we're talking about video games instead of like just like planning a ritual suicide over Skype over this fucking film, I I feel very positive about that. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're ending the night on a on, a, on an up note. Yes. I think it's important. Yes. Agreed. Uh, but yeah, if 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 you if you do have like like a depression issues and you want to see Manchester, take a friend. Make yeah. sure they're driving. Yes. If this film, well, ju- there's there's no go with your there's no go with your sponsor. Even better. There's more there's more hope in fences than there than even close to Manchester. <laughs> And I'm not saying hope has a happy ending, but I'm just, I'm, or fences has a happy ending. But Jesus, like, I, I watched fences. I remember I watched fences first, and then I watched Manchester, and I said to myself, I, "Thank God I did it in this order," because I don't think I'd be able to survive Manchester without thinking, "Hey, things weren't that bad in fences." <laughs> I don't know if I would have made it through that. Yeah. Make sure you make sure you have access to a couple of goofy comedies like Hot Tub Time Machine and uh, and Kung Pao to sandwich between to sandwich Manchester between. You you have to give yourself a whole day just to make it through Manchester. It's a fucking depressing film. Very, it's very well made. It's very good, but it is depressing <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Especially that twist. Again, the second that twist, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I knew nothing about it as well. <laughs> like I said, when he grabs that cop's gun at that scene, I'm like, yeah, I'm there now. I'm yeah. already there. <laughs> it's not even a shot. It wasn't even that surprise. It was like, yeah, I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I probably wouldn't have done anything any different. And that's why this is one of those few films that we have to give a spoiler warning before, because I tell you, that, like, you can't talk about this film and not bring that up and say this is the part where I realized the film knew how much it was fucking with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and end this shit. Yes, sir. Sorry. No, it's okay. All right, everyone. Uh, as always, thank you for joining us. Episode 235. Thank you so much. 235 of Movie Sucktastic. Go to our website at moviesucktastic.com. Uh, listen to the shows there. Download the shows there. Tune in every week at 8 o'clock on Thursday and every listen week. live. Um, live. Live, we're doing it live. Doing um, it live. You can go to facebook.com slash movies yeah. fantastic and you could uh, go there for things like trailers, when we go live, what we're reviewing. We give of, us feedback. F- feedback, all of that good stuff. Uh, you can go to iTunes and you could download or listen to the show there as well. If you go there, please leave us a review. We always appreciate it. Yes, uh, yes, yes. You can go to our Tumblr page at moviesucktastic.tumblr.com. If you wanna, there. If you want to leave us... You're chiming in on everything I'm saying. I, I think it's adorable. Uh, well, I'm trying to be a part of the show. Of course. Well, if you made those <laughs> recordings, then we'd be listening to those. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to leave us email, the address is themovieguys at moviesucktastic.com. We'll if, read it. If you want to leave us voicemail, the number is 908-514-4470. We'll listen to it over and over again. Over and over. Uh, <laughs> make sure you go ahead and download the free Android app. Everything I just mentioned is in there. It's 100% free. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, and all you iPhone I users, there's a mobile version of the site as well. And that's good, too. Do you have any words of wisdom, Mr. Wilson? Uh, <laughs> suicide. Don't do it. Yeah. What'd you buy this car in 1928? Where's the horse that leaves this thing? Maybe it'll come breathe on us for warmth. (laughs) 
Oh, God. There was, you know what? There was one funny part of the film that I can't fucking remember. It's the entire show. I can't remember the one line that they had back and forth. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's just that, it was that just very casual. Yeah, you know you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> it was something like that. Something so just banal. And the second time I used that word, I feel arrogant for saying using it. But there was this one scene where they're in the car, I think it was, and they were just saying back and forth. It's just this one line. It was like, yeah, it's fucking great. can't think of it. So now I've just wasted time. Oh, I know the scene you're talking about, and I can't. I don't remember the dialogue either. But they are see, going back see, and thank forth. Thank you. It was like it was. It was memorable at that moment. And you look back, it's like, oh fuck, there's something. It's one of those films. There's so much going on, like Fences. So much dialogue. So much good yeah. dialogue. Well, it reminded even me, even though it's simple. It reminded me of the scene where he's talking about how old his car is. Where's the horse that yeah. leads it? Maybe it'll come breathe on us. And then because the scene had just happened, where his they they found out that they couldn't bury his father, and they had to put him in a freezer. And he's like, yeah, maybe we'll put my father in the back for three months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was between his nephew Patrick and him, uh, Casey Affleck Lee. It was it was their going back and forth. Uh huh. So I, I just don't remember. Great, great chemistry between those two. It might have been but anyway. Was that it, should have been in the show, and not after the uh, <clears throat> during the end. Was it when <laughs> they, when it was was it when he was talking about his mother when they were on the on the road to go there? And they couldn't find the address, and he was talking about his shitty phone. No, that, that's no? not it. Okay, that's not it. That was kind of funny too, where he's talking about it was, his, but that's his not, shitty phone. That's not that line but, I'm thinking. But of. it's I'll, definitely I'll the interaction between the two of them. Oh, I'll music's think for four hours from now. Music in faded. a cold sweat. I'll, that's I'll the remember. second time in a row we've talked longer than the music. Oh, do we? We're done with the music. The music faded out. Yes. Oh shit! So we, we should be like, just pretend like we're not here. Yeah. Okay. Da 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 da. Talk to you next week. Bye. See ya. Just stop it already, goddammit. Later. <laughs> <laughs>